Hello and welcome back to my channel or if you are new here my name is Whitley. Today is the first day of Fright Week which is a week-long readathon hosted by Crystal from Crystal Visions, Rain from Bruise and Binds, Marcy from Marcy Reads, and Carol from Carol Marie Reads. I participated in their Horror in 24 readathon back in August and I had such a good time. I am so excited to participate in this one as well especially because it is the week leading up to Halloween which means I am even more in the mood for some good spooky Halloween stories. First I will let you know what books I'm going to be reading this week and then throughout the week I will let you know my thoughts. Prompt number one is read a book that takes place on Halloween and I know some people had some trouble with this one but two of the books that I have on here actually take place on Halloween so worst comes to worst I can double up on this challenge Hopefully won't have to though. So the book that I have for this challenge, Something Wicked This Way Comes by Ray Bradbury. I don't know a lot about this. I know it's pretty old. It's like a classic, I believe. And it's about a wicked circus that comes to town. And I have read quite a few circus stories and have adored every single one. So I'm really hoping that this will be no different. I'm really excited to get into this one. Prompt number two is read a book with a pumpkin on the cover. So funny enough, almost all of these books can fall into more than one category. So in case something tragic happens and I can't read as much as I want to, I will definitely be covered. But I have a book for every prompt. Most of the books can fall under more than one category though. So hopefully I get all five finished by the end of the week. But we shall see. Prompt number two is read a book with a pumpkin on the cover and for that one I will be reading Pumpkin Heads by Rainbow Rowell and illustrated by Faith Erin Hicks. I am a huge fan of Rainbow Rowell's work although it's been a long time since I've read anything by her but Fangirl continues to be one of my all-time favorites and this is a graphic novel about two teenage kids that have been working at this pumpkin patch every fall throughout their high school and they're getting ready to go away to college and we follow their last Halloween at this pumpkin patch. And I flipped through this graphic novel and the art style is just so adorable. I love it so much. It's so colorful and I believe this is a middle grade so it's not going to be the spooky kind but it is just giving off all of the autumnal vibes and I am so excited to dig into it. Prompt number three is read a book by a diverse author and I have chosen Night of the Mannequins by Stephen Graham Jones for this one. This is a short story about killer mannequins I think. Super intrigued. I haven't read anything by Stephen Graham Jones so I am excited to see what I think of his writing style and I think a short story is a great way to start. It says we thought we'd play a fun prank on her and now most of us are dead. So looking forward to see what this short story has in store. Prompt number four is read a horror graphic novel or manga. And for this I am super excited to say that I will be reading Uzumaki by Junji Ito. It is on my iPad. <laughs> I have heard absolutely nothing but great things about Junji Ito's manga and I am so excited to dig in. This is going to be my first one and I've heard that this is a great place to start so I will be reading this crazy manga about a town that is infested with spirals. Sounds weird. I've heard it's super creepy and that is exactly what I'm in the mood for. Super excited. And last but not least, prompt number five is read a short story collection or anthology. And for this I have chose Dead Leaves by Kaylin Patrick Burke. This came highly recommended by a few of the hosts of this readathon. It is a short story collection that has nine tales from the witching season and I cannot wait to dig into this one. I adore horror short stories. It's like it brings me back to my childhood of when we used to tell ghost stories to each other so really looking forward to reading this one. So those are the five books that I am going to be reading this week. I will bring you along for the ride and let you know my thoughts. I will check back with you guys when I have an update.
Hello guys, I am here to update you. I have read about five chapters of Uzumaki and I am loving it so much. It is so creepy and you wouldn't think that spirals were scary, but my god, they are horrifying. Like Ito's artistry is so phenomenal and the concept is just so unique and I can totally see why he's so popular. I am absolutely loving this manga so far. So I bookmarked some of these graphics that I thought were br absolutely breathtaking that I wanted to share with you guys. So you can see my ring light. So this guy has become a spiral. He became so obsessed with them that he became one. But that's not all. This one's not scary, but just look at this artwork. It is just absolutely beautiful. I am in love with this art style. I will say that I am relatively new to graphic novels, but I am having so much fun getting into the genre and I have not read one that I have not enjoyed so far. Okay, so this one is super crazy. Look at this girl's eye! Look at her face! What? This book is just so so crazy. I'm loving it so much. The story coupled with these magnificent drawings. Like what is this? What is happening? This graphic novel has been such a trip and I'm not even halfway done with the journey yet but I had to stop in and tell you how much I am absolutely loving this manga. Junji Ito has not disappointed. I have also finished Pumpkin Heads and I absolutely loved it. It was so adorable. The art style was breathtaking. It was beautiful. It was so colorful and vibrant and rich. I also loved our two main characters. I feel like they were very fleshed out, especially for a graphic novel. They were both very unique and each had their own personality and they just fit so well together in the story. And I definitely think I have a girl crush on Deja. She has curves, but still knows she's beautiful. She's confident. She's funny. She is amazing. So there's this one character that Deja kept giving little nicknames to and it was just so funny. This whole book was filled with humor and I feel like there were definitely good messages that can be taken especially towards the younger people that this is marketed towards. Like if you want something you have to go out and work for it and get it. Fate is just not going to bring it to your lap. There are no meant to be. If you want something go out and get it. And that was kind of the big like message out of this graphic novel and I just loved it so much. We also got a map of this pumpkin patch and can I just say where are all the pumpkin patches? This looks absolutely delightful. Like can someone make this please? We got a corn maze, we got pumpkin chunkin, we got hay rides, we got a petting zoo, we have a s'mores pit. I don't know what the heck succotash is but there's a hut for it. I absolutely loved this. The whole aesthetic was so autumnal and it just put me so much more in the mood for fall and I adored it. Five out of five. Highly recommend. So that is it for right now. I am going to go continue Uzumaki and I will check back with you when I have an update. Hello, it is now Tuesday evening. I am about 80% into Uzumaki and this story just keeps getting weirder and weirder. Like I have no idea where this story is going. Like this town has become so consumed with these spirals and some of these spirals like don't even make any sense. Like I said, weirder and weirder but I am loving every minute of it. I cannot wait to see where this story is actually going to go and how in the world this is gonna end because I have no idea. So I went to visit my mom yesterday and I actually got to take a bath. I know that might not sound very exciting, but I don't have a bathtub here at home and it has been so long since I've gotten to take a bath. So I went down there, I took my book and I got a nice bath bomb and lit some candles and it was just so nice and I read the first story in Dead Leaves. Wasn't a big fan but I have since read two more and I have liked those a lot better. Also the introduction to this book 
like I um, I highlighted almost all of it. It was so good. So I highlighted all of this and all of this. So I'm not gonna sit here and read it all to you, but basically it's just saying like Halloween is a time where even adults can get back to being children and give out candy, put on masks, cuddle up with a loved one and watch some spooky stuff. And what's so special about horror and Halloween is that it is controlled horror. We are content in the fact that when we put on a horror movie, if it gets to be too much, we can turn the channel. Or if we're reading a horror book and we can't take it anymore, we can shut the book. It is controlled horror and in a weird way that is comforting. Like we get scared on our own terms when the real world is not that controllable and it's scary. But Halloween and horror give us the ability to say, nope, that's enough. I've had enough for today, switching it off. I will read this very last part because I love it so much. It says, Halloween provides us with the choice to be scared or to scare others. It allows us to vicariously slip behind the mask and see the world through the eyes of things that evoke fear in others. It allows us to be scared out of our wits, safe in the knowledge that it isn't real. For one night and one night only, we're the monsters. This is horror, ladies and gentlemen. In books, movies, video games, horror is escapism, no more or less than Halloween. We wear the masks for a short time, knowing that they can always be removed. We get to be scared in a safe environment and nobody gets hurt. This is Halloween, this is horror, celebrate it. Beautiful words by Kaylin Patrick Burke. And I just have to say, even though I wasn't a big fan of the first short story, Andromeda, I am absolutely in love with Burke's writing style. It is just so melodic and you can really like feel and hear the atmosphere that he writes about and I'm absolutely loving it. But now my husband and I are going to sit down and watch a movie. I have my tea and my pumpkin seeds and I am ready to snuggle in to a relaxing evening with my husband as we watch a movie. I think we might watch Huey Halloween. I've heard that it's really silly but really heartwarming and just good clean fun. So excited to watch that and hopefully we get to watch Pet Cemetery sometime this week. I'm hoping that we take this week to watch quite a few Halloweeny movies since it is Halloween week. So I'm going to go do that and I will see you guys tomorrow. I am back. I have finished Uzumaki by Jinji Ito. This book was absolutely insane and it's so strange to think that something as harmless and abstract as some spirals could turn into something so horrifying. The creativity and the idea of this story is enough for an award alone, but add this breathtakingly horrific artwork and the insane storyline and you have a masterpiece. I also loved the little self comic sections that we got from Ito. I thought that was so cool and creative. And I'm sure this goes without saying, but you do kind of need to suspend your disbelief a little bit when reading this, especially as the story goes on because like I said, this story just keeps getting weirder and weirder. Like at a few of the parts, I just found myself saying like, really, that that's what's happening now? that's what we're doing. But for the most part, I think this book did such a good job at keeping the absurdity of the situations creepy and not laughable. And I think that is definitely because of this gorgeous, horrific artwork. I mean, some of the parts were a little laughable, but if you think about the reality of these situations, like put yourself in these people's shoes, it was absolutely terrifying. Speaking of the characters, they were also kind of flat and I didn't really care about any of them, but that didn't really draw away from the story, which means a lot coming from me because I'm a very character driven reader, but this crazy story and this beautiful artwork was enough to definitely keep me entertained. 
The ending was also a little anticlimactic for me. I mean, after all of this, yes, hello. After all of this body horror and buildup that we got, it was just kind of a left turn how the ending turned into this macabre cosmic ending that we got. And I don't know what I was expecting, but it was not that. All in all, I so enjoyed it though. I will definitely be checking out more of Junji Ito's work. I also finished Dead Leaves by Kaylin Patrick Burke. I so enjoyed this short story collection. It just brought me back to the nostalgia of sitting around campfires and taking hay rides and telling spooky stories to all my friends. I also thought it was really cool how he included a bunch of like spooky movie and book recommendations in the back of this. I will definitely have to go through those and I know I've seen and read a few of them but I will definitely have to check some of these out. I also like starred up the table of contents and put stars by each of the stories. As you can see most of them were four and five stars. I absolutely loved this collection. Also horror movie week update. We watched QB Halloween and I really enjoyed it. Like it was like a stupid kind of funny and I usually love those kinds of movies so enjoyed that one. The next night we watched Ready or Not which if you don't know is about a girl who gets married and in order to be welcomed into this family she has to play a game and if you draw the one card like it's a random card that you draw and if you draw hide and seek it's pretty much the world's dangerous game where she has to hide and try to survive while the whole family tries to kill her. I really really enjoyed that one although the ending was a little weird but very much enjoyed. And then last night we watched a Hulu exclusive movie. It was like an Into the Dark movie which is like Hulu's uh, horror movies and it was called Down which is about this man and woman who get stuck in an elevator together. And that's really all I can say without <laughs> spoiling anything if you do decide you want to watch it. Um it was okay. It's been my least favorite so far but it was it was definitely a slow burn. I did enjoy it just not as much as the other two. So now I am going to start Night of the Mannequins by Stephen Graham Jones. I think I can knock this out tonight and tomorrow and hopefully have the whole weekend to read Something Wicked This Way Comes. But like I said if I don't get to that one all of the prompts will still be fulfilled because Dead Leaves checked off three of the five of them but I would really like to get to that one. But I'm very excited to start this one. It's only 131 pages so confident that I can knock this out and really looking forward to get into this one. Mannequins I think are super creepy so high hopes for this one. I just opened this book and I did not realize how many freaking books Stephen Graham Jones has. I've only ever heard of this one and The Only Good Indians and I am definitely going to be reading The Only Good Indians soon so if I like these two there is no shortage of backlist for me to read which is amazing. Now I'm gonna go start this. Happy Halloween! It is Saturday afternoon and I have finished Night of the Mannequins by Stephen Graham Jones. This book was so weird. I went in expecting this fantasy killer mannequin on the loose and that is not quite what I got but I really enjoyed it. It's hard to go into detail about what it's about because it's so short but basically there's this group of five teenagers and one of them works at a movie theater so the other four decide to play a prank on her and they found this mannequin in the woods a few years back that they played with all summer so they thought it would be funny to sneak the mannequin into the movie theater and have their friend find it there in the theater but it doesn't quite work out that way. But I really did enjoy this. It was a really unique premise and the writing style was so weird. I'm not even sure how to explain it but it was kind of like our main character was writing in a journal is kind of the vibe that it gave me. There was a lot of I means and the word likes and there were like incomplete sentences. There were run-on sentences but I 
think that it was done intentionally and it kind of seemed like as the book goes on the more jumbled the main character's thoughts become which I thought was cool as well. I will definitely be reading more Stephen Graham Jones because I really enjoyed this. And since it is the last day of the readathon I'm probably not going to get to Something Wicked This Way Comes but I did manage to finish four books even though one was a graphic novel, one was a manga, and one was a short story. I'm so proud of myself for finishing four books in a week. And I am so happy to say that I really enjoyed everything I read this week. I had such a good reading week. This has been such a good readathon and a Halloween week. I also got to watch the new Pet Cemetery movie and if I wasn't comparing it to a book it would have been a really good movie. And it, it still was a really good movie but comparing it to the book there were just a lot of differences as most adaptations have. But they killed the wrong kid and I do get why they did it. I mean that gives them a lot more options with an eight-year-old than a three-year-old so I get it and it was good but as always the book was better. So this is probably going to be my last update. My family is having a small Halloween party tonight so I will definitely not be doing any more reading but as I said, I had such a good reading week. I had such a good time. If you enjoyed this video and haven't already, don't forget to subscribe, give the video a like, and let me know what your Halloween plans were. What did you guys do for Halloween? Did you dress up? Did you chill at home, watch some movies? Let me know. I'm sure this Halloween wasn't what everybody was expecting and I know I didn't get to do all of the things that I usually love to do around Halloween but I hope everybody made the best of it and had a good Halloween anyway. I hope you have a great day, a great week, continue to stay safe and I will see you in the next one. Bye!